In all your glory, you look down upon us and say we are worthy. delay, God is alive. For every rejection, he is alive. For everything that the enemy would do, in the midst of that storm, he is there. Tell your neighbor, smile. Walk up to five persons and tell them, smile. Jehovah sees, Jehovah knows, He is my peace when sorrow needs, Jehovah sees, Jehovah knows, He is my peace when trouble Jehovah knows. Yes, he knows. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Let's celebrate the prophet of liberation. Celebrate your neighbor as you take your seats in heavenly places. We're going to share the word and then we are going to pray. There are prayer points that the Lord has given to me. Just a few. And then we are going to pray. Hallelujah. Please open your Bibles with me to the book of Hebrews 4, 15 to 16. For we do not have a high priest... Who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses? So you see every weakness you have. He sympathizes with you. You know sometimes we think it is only when we are perfect that he loves us. It's not only when you are perfect. The Bible says that he sympathizes with us even in our weaknesses. Even when we don't pray the way we ought to. Even when we don't fast the way we ought to. Even when we don't believe the way we ought to. The Bible says, even in our weakness, even in your weakness. You know that thing that the enemy will always whisper in your ear? All the curses, all the foundational trauma, all the things happening in your life that the enemy will be using to tease you. In fact, sometimes he will recruit his agents. Those agents will begin to speak those things. Those agents will begin to magnify your weakness. But the Bible tells me, he says, he, he sympathizes with my weaknesses. Tell your neighbor, he sympathizes with my weaknesses. But one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore draw near with confidence. Tell your neighbor, with confidence. Are you drawing near him with confidence? It is not by your power. <laughs> it is not by your fasting. It is not because you are the most righteous. That's why you can come before him. He knows our weaknesses. But he's telling us, come to me with confidence. Praise the Lord. He says, come 
to me with confidence, to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in times of need. When I finished studying the scripture, I'm somebody who loves to garden. I love to plant. I love everything plant. Sometimes I feel like I can hear them when I'm walking by my little area of plants. You know, sometimes I feel like this one needs water. This one needs sun. I don't know how, but somehow that's how connected I am. And then sometimes I buy manure. When I potted a plant for so long, you know, I, I put the plant. And when it's not doing so well, I'll buy like a special bag of manure. I'll remove the old soil. And then I'll put the new soil. And then a plant that has not bloomed for months, even though it's the season of such plants to bloom, you see, it begins to sprout. You see, the grace of God is sufficient. His mercy is sufficient. His blessings are there. But I want to ask, and by the help of the Holy Spirit, I have tied to this message, check your soil. Your soil is your heart. Your soil is your mind. Your soil is everything that has to do with you as a person. And so you see, if everything is available, because you can have fertilizer, you can have manure, you, you can have the best type of soil. But you see, if you carry a very good plant and you put it in a soil that is bad, that plant will not bloom. Praise the Lord. A while ago, I told us on this altar, and I say, word for word, wherever you are planted, bloom. How many of us remember? If you follow me very well on TikTok, it is one of the videos there. Wherever you are planted, bloom. But the Holy Spirit told me, if somebody is planted in an environment that is wrong, that person cannot bloom, no matter the gift you carry. No matter the grace of God upon your life, no matter the anointing that he has released upon your life, if you are not in the right environment, in the right soil that has the, you know, the required amount of fertilizer, that has everything that you need, you will not bloom. And so you see, sometimes it seems like I talk a lot about your environment. It is because I understand it. Praise the Lord. And maybe that's the, that's the area God wants me to continue to open the eyes of his people. There are gifts that are deposited inside of you. But until you change your soil, you cannot bloom no matter how hard you fight. A lot of us are waiting. You see some people will come with different issues. Especially when it comes to marriage. And they have a lot of complaints. I'm going to tell you something that a lot of preachers will not tell you. And you will know for my women, I always go all out. If the Holy Spirit had told you something, you don't need to ask another person. Those that are very sensitive will understand what I just said. How do you know if it's the Holy Spirit telling you? When, you are, when that voice is speaking in your heart, you have peace. There's no struggle. There's no fear. You are waiting for validation from somebody else for what the Holy Spirit has already told you. And that's why sometimes even when as preachers we cancel you, we advise you, you still end up doing what you want to do. Because you have the spirit of God in you and that spirit speaks. And if you listen all the time to that spirit, your flower will sprout. Because that spirit will push you to the right environment. It will push you to the right people. Where with little water, with little fertilizer, you begin to bloom. So I want you to leave this service today and ask yourself, Mama is saying I should bloom, I should bloom, I should bloom. How is my environment? What are the requirements? Do I have the requirement? The grace of God is one requirement that will allow you to bloom. Because if you want to look at what your hands can do. There are people that are so wealthy now, they know that it's not because they were too intelligent. There are people that have successful homes now. It is not because they were perfect, but because the grace of God was sufficient and they understood it and they tapped into that grace to make up for a fertilizer that they do not have. So women, tell your neighbor, get yourself together. 
For the single ones that are around us, you still have time to plant yourself properly. Because if you took the wrong soil, no matter what is inside of you, it will die. Everybody wants to have children. It's not about having children. It's having children that are good. That have good character. Everybody wants to get married. It's not about getting married. It's about having a man that puts fertilizer in your soil. That puts water. That when you need sun, he will take you out. So that sun can beat you. So that your nutrients are complete. Bloom where you are planted. But yet... Without the necessary requirement, without the grace of God, people will kill the gifts inside of you. If it's not one in-law killing it, it is one unruly family member. If it is not that, it is household wickedness. If it is not that, it is powers from your father's house. If it is not that, it is demonic curses that they have laid against that foundation. And so you see, you have everything, but yet money is not coming. You are closing one business to start the other. You're not happy in your marriage. Everything looks like it is failing. Everything around you is dropping. Check your environment. Because everything that you need to succeed has already been given to you. Jesus died not to enslave you. Oh my God. He died to give you power, to give you confidence, to give you the right standing to go before God and say, Father, I need this without shame. Do not let what people have called you define your life. Because if you're, if you're dealing with a narcissist, you will not understand it. If you're dealing with people that cannot help you grow, you will not understand it. And so yet, we are praying to God. We are praying to God. But you have your own role to play. When we see the parable of the sower and the seed and how in different places, it determines how strong you will grow. That parable can, can mean a lot of things to different people. So are you planting on a rocky ground? That question is for yourself. Are you planting on a rocky ground? When wind comes and everything comes, it will just blow you and you will just fall down. It sounds cliche. But you see, in this life, if you do not hold on to God, you won't go far. There are too many forces. There are too many powers that are holding on to your leg and ensuring that you do not get to the next level. Too many powers holding on to your leg and ensuring that you do not serve God the way you are meant to serve God. And that's why the most dangerous person you can get married to is somebody who doesn't allow you to go to church. Because even Jesus, when he was speaking you know, to his disciples, he said the one that cannot leave his father and mother, they are not worthy to follow me. So if you have a partner that is already stopping you from going to church or you have a wife that cannot follow you to church every day as a man, you are the only one in church. Check your surrounding. Why is the business not growing? Is your partner helping you or are they pulling you down? Every woman here, if you don't have anything you are doing, please start something. Not so long ago, we had trainings. I'm expecting that those that were trained by now are already doing something. If you are idle, you don't have anything you are doing. You enslave yourself without knowing it. You kill yourself without knowing it. Have something that you are doing. Even if it's pure water that you are selling. Because somebody who is doing something, there are many things that will not disturb you. You see the little things that this, we disturb ourselves about. If you are busy and you are doing things, you will see that the stress in your life is reduced. If you check statistics now, women have the highest number of high blood pressure cases. More than men. I know the men will just come for me for this one, but it's the truth. Why is this so? Because of how emotional we are. Because of how we dissect things in our mind. What is A? If you tell a woman A, she will, she will dissect the A, remove the line here, remove the line here. The line in the middle, she will begin to analyze it. That's how we are. We are emotionally wired. And so for somebody who is emotionally wired and you are not in an environment that will help you grow, you will silently die. Same 
thing for a man. If you are in an environment that you cannot grow, that your best cannot come out, you don't have the support system you need to have. Moses in all of his greatness needed Aaron. So that as they were in battle, his hand was lifted and Aaron was there supporting it. Who is supporting your hand as a man, as a woman? Was Moses not powerful? Somebody talk to me. Look at the story of Mary and Martha. Why one was busy running up and down? The one way gets sent, sat at the feet of Jesus. As women, we want to take care of everybody. Who is taking care of you? Ask your neighbor, who is taking care of you? Ask them very well. As a woman, which is good because we are nurturers. But see, there comes a time where you will step back and stand and begin to think. Has anybody asked me how I'm doing today? Or the only question I've asked is, where's my food? When was the last time somebody asked you, how are you doing? How is your health? How is your emotional state of mind? I know we don't have children, but I'm here to encourage you. Don't let that, don't let that define our relationship. Because some of the most Saddest. I don't know if there's a word like that, but I'll use it. Women that you can find are the ones that don't have children. The ones that don't have children. That thing pains them more than any other thing. So you see, in an environment where you don't have children, and especially in this society, where once a woman cannot get pregnant, it's her fault. You know in this part of the world, any, if there's no baby, it's the woman's fault. Am I the only one that feels like that? Uh, women, I don't... Why are we... True or false? So imagine such a woman. Outsiders are abusing her, you're barren. In the house, she's getting you a barren every day. Even when it might not be her fault. Nobody will tell you these things, but me, I will tell you. Check your environment. Because you see, if anything happens to you, eh? if anything happens to you as a man, no, whether you're a woman, this one has nothing to do with gender, everybody will move on. And if anything is going to happen to you, they will not ask, does this one have children? No, because she has children, let, let us leave her. Oh, does this one have husband? Oh, because there's husband, let us leave. Oh, does he have a wife? Because there's a wife, let us leave him. Check your environment. Your mental state is very important. Because if you are praying and God is answering and the soil is not black enough, you have no access to sun. You are not watered yourself. Because as women, we want to take care of everybody. When was the last time somebody asked you, have you eaten? I'm hard a little today. But the truth is the truth. And if you come to D-Wings, know that you will worship, you will pray, and you will hear the truth. Walk on your soil. We focus more on asking God for material things. But you see, even if the material things come and the soil is not a good soil, those material things will not stay. So change your prayer points as a man, as a woman. Father, let my soil be conducive. What is your soil? I'm using that as an analogy to describe your mind, to describe your soul, to describe your emotional state of being, to describe your mental state. Check it. And that should be the first thing, Father. Let my soil be watered. Because when the soil is ripe and it is right, you will not beg that flower to bloom. <laughs> when there's enough water, you will not beg that soil to be moist enough for the roots to stand and be firm. Because anything that will stand the test of time must have solid foundation. Your soil. Because when everything is right, when it has to do with your soil, you will prosper, you will grow, the children will come. Because see, as you worry yourself, you don't have the children, the more you worry yourself, the more it will not come. Because your mind is not at peace. Your soil is, is dry. So let's begin to ask God. Let's begin to, you know, say the right prayer points. 
Father, everything that is wrong in my foundation, repair it. Father, give me a house. Father, I want a car. Father, I want children. Father, I want this. Father, I want that. But I'm here to tell you the most important is the foundation. Because the Bible says if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? So it's talking to righteous people. It's not talking to sinners. Do we get that? Do we get that? Are we following me? The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? It is not referring to sinners. It is referring to you and I. So the foundation in that home, in that marriage, in that relationship, because sometimes what you are waiting for a preacher to tell, they will not tell you so that we are not quoted. But let the Holy Spirit speak to you. So that anywhere that needs watering, He's the source of all flesh. Anything you commit to him cannot fail. Anything you trust him with cannot fail. And yes, they may be laughing at you that you're yet unmarried. Check the foundation. Doesn't make you less of a woman. And yes, the children have not come. Check the foundation. It doesn't mean you are the problem. Check the lineage of your father. Check the lineage of your mother. Check. And solve the main issue. Praise the Lord. From today, God will begin to open your eyes. As a man, as a woman to understand. Because the Bible says the people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There are things that you must know as a woman, as a man, so that you can blossom. Because I teach us all the time, bloom, bloom where you are planted. Anywhere you are, let your flowers come. Do not begin to dim your light. But you see, in all of those things, eh, your foundation, your relationship. If you are not in a relationship that is helping you bloom, the worst thing you can do to yourself is marry. And you marry because of peer pressure. Because everybody is getting married. But it's not better you marry and you stay married than to run away or die because you wanted that title of missus. A man will marry. A man that is doing well will marry. All of a sudden, everything will scatter. Check well. Beauty fades. Beauty what? If you like her slim, she might become fat. If you like her fat, she might become skinny. So in time, you know what will keep the home? It's not her face. It's not her figure. It's her mind in connection to your own. The same thing with a woman. I told us the last time, you are dating somebody. He never asks, how is your business doing? This is a new book that I found that I think will help you grow. I think we should go for this seminar. I think you need to go for deliverance. I've noticed a pattern in your family. Let us go to divine hand of God. But instead... He is talking left. Your destiny is right. He is left. But yet you say you want to marry the person. You have taken him home. Your father and your mother have told you, this one is a no. You say, I love, I love him, mommy. I love. There are certain things that you cannot learn from anywhere, but from elders. From your parents. If you have any elderly person around you, hold them like this. And when your parents speak, listen. Because there are certain things you cannot find on Facebook and Instagram. You find in the wisdom of elders. And when you listen to their counsel, you see that your soil is black and watered. Your mind is flourishing. Your mental health is flourishing. Emotionally, you are strong. The storms will come, but you know that Jesus lives. And because he lives, you will face tomorrow. No shaking. Your soil. As you go home today, if anything that I've said resonates with you, just go back to God. Father, this is where I've made mistake. Help me. And his grace is sufficient because he understands your weaknesses. So yes, you defied your parents. You did what they advised you not to do. But go before him. Because when you say if the foundation be destroyed, what can the right? He wasn't talking about sinners. So which means even as a righteous person, there are certain steps you take that will take the grace of God to recover from. May you recover from every mistake. 
May your husband recover from every mistake. May you as a wife recover from every mistake. May every household power that is standing and dictating your future on your behalf be crushed. Let us stand to our feet. I want us to pray. There are one or two things that the Lord told me we should pray about. You see, very... To, sometimes to prove that you are speaking the truth, you want to swear. How many of us have been there? Seems like everybody here, we have a perfect people. I'm so unperfect. I'm so not perfect. Oh God, I'm far from it. But I, 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 I dwell on his grace. How many people have, just to show that you are speaking the truth. Somebody is accusing you that you're lying. To show that you're speaking the truth, you begin to swear. Please wave your hands. I'm waving mine. Wave your hands. You see what the Bible tells us? Never swear. What did he say? Either by your head or by Jerusalem. Never swear. Nobody is what you're swearing. Believe me, believe me. You know, believe for your pocket. If God sees that I'm speaking the truth, tell your neighbor it's enough. Do we understand that it's not everything that you have to explain? Let me tell us today now, the same way the Holy Spirit told me. It's not everything that you have to explain. There are certain things that you just... Silence is the best. I didn't say that part too. I want us to pray. You're going to say, Father, for every time I have sworn in your name... Oh, uh, let me bring the Bible. I swear with the Bible. This one, I didn't hear from it. It's the Holy Spirit that told me. He said, when you go before my women, pray that every... You see him? The Bible calls the devil the accuser of the brethren. So it's possible there's a window that he's using to stand. Because you went contrary to the God whom you say you love so much. And you were swearing with his word. Because you want to prove a human being right. What an error. Tell your neighbor error. Open your mouth and begin to pray. For God to forgive you for every time you have sworn. Father, I ask for forgiveness. On behalf of myself, on behalf of my women, we ask for forgiveness. For every time that we have sworn by your name and by your word, Father Lord, I ask for forgiveness. I ask for your mercy. If you understand, you will pray. Have you heard this prayer point before? Hi. Father, we ask for your mercy. We ask for your forgiveness. For every time that we have sworn in your name, Father Lord, I ask for forgiveness. I ask for mercy. I ask for your mercy. I ask for your mercy. I ask for your mercy. In Jesus' mighty name, you are going to repeat after me. My Father, my Father, where my plants will blossom, where my destiny will blossom, Father, help me to achieve it. Open your mouth and pray. Pray for your destiny. Pray for your children. Father, Lord, anywhere that we will blossom, help us to achieve it. Help that vision come true. Help that purpose come true. Help that assignment come true. Help that calling come true. Open your mouth and pray in this place. Father, Lord, help. We ask for your grace. We ask for your mercy. In Jesus' name, you are going to pray. My Father, my Father, help me in my times of weakness. Because there are so many mistakes that we make every day. Knowing and unknowingly, we make them. Why? Because we are imperfect. There was only one who went through all of this temptation and came out without any sin. His name is Jesus. So you are going to pray, Father, help me in my times of weakness. Help me to be strong in you. Open your mouth and pray. Father, Lord, help me in my times of weakness. Help me to be strong in you. Help me to trust in you. Help me to have faith in your word. No matter what I see, Lord. No matter what the enemy throws, Lord. Father, help me to be strong. Help me to be strong. Help, my, help me in my times of weakness. Be my strength, Lord. Be my strength, Lord. Speak for me where I cannot speak. Go for me where I cannot go. Father, intercede for me where I cannot speak. Father, be my advocate. Be my lawyer, Father, Lord, where I do not have a voice. Be my lawyer, be my advocate where I do not have power. Father, be my lawyer, my advocate in their coven. Open your mouth and pray.
today. Lord, help us. Help us. Where's King David? King David, I want you to come down here. Can somebody get him for me? My father, my father. My father, my father. Help my foundation to be strong in you. Let me tell us something. When people see me, they say, Ah, Mama, you smile. You smile. It's not because Mama does have problems. But there's a foundation that is deep that can never be broken. There, there's a root. I've told us how I came to Christ. I wasn't preached to. So nobody can get that glory. On my own, I came to know him. So you see, my root is different. And so, no matter what the enemy throws, this worship will continue forever and ever. Ah, it will continue. So you are going to pray, Father. Because when your foundation is strong, when the wind comes, you are standing. It, it will shake you left and right, but you are standing. They will gossip and gossip, but you are standing. They will spoil your name and spoil your name, but you will stand. They will lie and they will lie, but you will stand. Everything will come against you, but the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against them. You are going to open your mouth and you are going to pray, Father, my Father, my Father. Let my foundation be strong in you. Let it be strong in you. Let it be strong. You open your mouth and pray. See, everything rests on the foundation that you have with God Almighty. Let my foundation be strong in you. Yeah, but... seen a child who is speaking in tongues at three. I have that one of those first videos. At my mom's birthday at three he was praying for everybody and speaking in tongues. <laughs> you don't teach a child to speak in tongues. So by the leading of the Holy Spirit I want him to pray for us including me because even Jesus' mother understood and she was advised anything he says to do do it. He came through me, but he belongs to the world. King David, you're going to pray for us. Okay. Everybody stretch your hand towards him. Let him pray for us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you have done. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. So now, I want you to do something. Because God is telling me today that this is one of the doings that will be remembered. God has told me that the um, that there's going to be an unction of power. Today, I'm going to be using one of my powerful unctions. Unction of power. I, 
I use, I call it the spiritual tornado. Whenever it starts spinning, oh, oh, yo, it drags all. You know, when a tornado is happening on, on, on a land, it drags, it drags. So, so, some people now is going to be falling under anointing. Because by the time I enter this unction, it's going to drag your problems out of you. I want you to start praying. Remove or say every problem you you want it to come out from your body. Yes, 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 yes. I take it out. I take it out. I take it out. I take it out. Yes, take it out. Take it out. Take it out. Take it out. I see some people traveling to Ukraine. I see some people getting a car. By the time oh. I count to God has given has given in the name of Jesus. Amen. God has given me numbers to say, which is going to time the anointing. By the time all of you guys should follow me as I say it. One. One. Two, two, three, three four, four, five, five six, 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 seven, seven eight. eight. Receive it now. Yaba, yagalabadabadabadabaka. Yagalabagaros. Yes, take it now. Take it now. Take it, 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 bring you. Take, bring all, drag your problems out and take the blessing. Dra, drag your problems, your situation that you think you can, not even God can solve it. But I'm going to tell you today, God can solve any, all of your problems. Start bringing it out now. Start bringing it out now. Start bringing it out now. Yes, 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 yes. Take the anointing. 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 Yes. 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 I'm giving the unction of power. 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 Unction of power. I use that power to to deliver you. To deliver your family. To deliver the, your whole city, to deliver your whole state. I use the power of an unction, 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 of an unction to, to deliver you, to, to bring those spirits out of your, your home, your environment, your environment, your environment. Yabodos, Yabalos. I use. I use some something is going to start moving now. Moving. It's like some a spirit is going to enter you. But don't be scared. Don't be scared. It's, it's the spirit of the Holy Ghost. And by by the time you feel something coming out, pa, you all the all the problems are out from your body. Amen. All the problems are out from your body. Amen. You yagala babo, ya baba baba babos, yala yala. Just keep saying, whether it's in your language, whether whether you say it in tongues, whether you say it, whether you say it in English, whatever. Just say, I bring it out and I put it in. I bring it out and put it in. I bring it out and put it in. I bring it out. I put in it. I put Yes, yes. You say what what you want to have in this life. You say and all the problems you want to come up. Exa I have an example. You say I I want I want money 
to come and I want and I want sickness to come out just say everything you want to come out and everything you want to come in and you say unction of power the unction of power the unction of spiritual priest unction of spiritual will the spirit of of the Lord. I use the, the unction of his of a spiritual priest. Yagalas, Yagalas, Manababos, Yabagas, Yabalos. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name. Money has come. Increase has come. Amen. Sickness has left. Troubles have left. You are living here watered. You are living here mentally, spiritually, and emotionally strong. Yaba. In the name of Jesus. No weapon of the enemy formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you is condemned today. Every agent of darkness that is whispering contrary against your destiny, against your purpose, against your calling, against your assignment, against your marriage, they are crushed today in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft power, every manipulative power that are walking on the ground. Oh, you earth, I speak to you in the name of he who died and rose on the third day. Any sacrifice that has been given to you in connection to every man and woman here, reject it. Reject it. And let it go back to sender. Let it go back to sender. Any offering that has been given to you, oh, you earth, I decree in the name of Jesus. Go back to he that offered that sacrifice to you. So shall it be, man. In Jesus' name. And as, Let's and as the Mama, I've gave you this prayer. Everything that you have wanted in this life, may you have it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.